may concern. You are probably wearing a polo shirt and a lanyard. I am writing this at three in the morning with coffee and cheap wine shaking the acid in my stomach. We are very different, you and I. You probably started off the same way, but where we start to go astray is that I'm willing to pay more than lip service to the idea that the kids in our charge can be more than just an empty backpack, a full lunchbox, and a credit card. That if we work hard, that little something burning noisy in their eyes won't be snuffed out by the time they start serving french fries. And I know I don't have your mug with your name on it. I don't have your employee of the month plaque. I don't have your paycheck, your lawyers, or your heart attack, but maybe that's that's why I can take some more risks. Maybe it's why I seize our charges as geniuses stuffed into the bodies of elves, and I know we owe it to ourselves to make a world they don't hate, 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 to whom it may concern. I'm writing to congratulate. This has been a great first step, but these kids need more than a false start, and if we did our jobs right, we'd be unemployed, and if we had integrity, we'd have died of broken hearts. Let me give you an example. At the beginning and end of every day, I see two kids. In the morning, it's the boy, 14, so broken by neglect that he tends to affect this politeness, but it has more to do with a whip dog's whimper than it ever will with respect. We keep spinning him this story, and the moral is always at your age. But when he speaks for himself, he's a symphony of rage played on instruments of disappointment. His whole life's been spent as a fly in the ointment of rotating fathers, suicide mothers. He only gets to see his brothers once a month because the reports read he's going to lead them down the wrong road. You pull them out of school like you don't know his whole life has been one long lesson in statistics. And if he gets a hold of a gun, you better believe he's going to experiment with ballistics. In the afternoon, it's a girl, 16, wants to color her world with her art. And it breaks your heart because you know she'll have to start by outgrowing the trust misplaced in her by us that let her get robbed by her mother and her sister, who took everything besides the blister her pencil makes across her hand because she'll never stop writing about her promised land, drawing, acting, rhyming about this heaven she invented when she was seven, when the world we boxed around her became too small to hold her. It's my job to scold her, to pamper him. I want to tell them both to run, to get out of your fight them, to escape your staff of sycophants. If people were plants, you would have to be a mushroom because that is the only thing I can think of that grows fat on bullshit. And me? <laughs> My qualifications include a lifetime of being bad at sports, bad at making friends, bad at knowing I'm wrong. My adolescence is a decade in and it's still going strong. I haven't reached the age when my anger is so dilute I serve it water cooler warm so I don't see these kids as a swarm of unemployed budget lines motivated solely by candy greed. I don't think that what they most need is a man with a whistle that he blows when they play rough. To whom it may concern, I don't think you're concerned enough. Yeah! Judges, right hand this time. Three, two, one. Up your scores. Holy shit. 9.8. 9.0, 9.5, 9.6, 9.7, 9.8, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9, 9.9